One of the things I was looking forward to the most when filming underwater was how does my rig work? Did my wafter sit up? Did my hook lie flat? How did the feeder sit? They were all questions I wanted answered. But on the day when we actually filmed, didn't get a lot of chance to talk you through the rig, my thinking, why I chose that feeder. So that's what I'm gonna do in this video. So first up, mainline. Now, a lot of anglers, myself included, probably don't put a lot of thought into their choice of mainline. But the swim we were in for underwater had a lot of weed in it, a lot of rushes, etc., gravel. So I needed a line with abrasion resistance, but also I was going to be casting 30 metres in front of a camera in a very small spot. So low diameter, but equally quite a high braking strain. So I went with eight pound Pulse Pro. I've said this a lot of times, but it's what I call a bulletproof mono. Highly abrasion resistance, low diameter, super slick through the rings. But something else that I noticed on the underwater filming visibility wise virtually impossible to see and it sinks we've all seen now that a little tiny line bite can move the feeder i need my line to be on the bottom when i'm feeder fishing if that line's sitting up maybe slightly buoyant going to get more liners more chance of the feeder actually moving so main line choice is actually far more important than i realized the feet oh, leave it there do not move that feeder feeder choice now anyone that knows me will know that i love a hybrid feeder so a chance to put a hybrid feeder in front of the camera is something i was never going to turn down so i went with what is my favorite feeder which is the 28 gram large i just think the proportions are right the way it protects the bait is right i just love this feeder it casts really well up to sort of 70 meters in good conditions and i feel like it always sits well well, that's what I always felt and that's what sort of underwater confirmed. So I went with 28 gram large on the basis, fishing for big fish. I want to give them a bit of bait, big fish, bigger feeder, particularly that time of year where the water's warm. Stem choice, we do a variety of stems, obviously in line and X safe. I'll always use elasticated X safe stems where allowed. The reason being, I can quick change my feeder. So obviously all we have is like a tail rubber. I have a loop in my main line, little clip and I can have several feeders made up. So if I'm in a max fishing situation, I can just clip feeders on and off. I can have them ready made up in my tray, literally reeling the empty feeder, clip it on and off. So I'll always go with the x the elasticated system, purely on that basis, quick change. And also when I'm playing fish, I feel like I lose less fish when the elastic's bouncing around at the net. When you're on an inline, I always feel like they can head nod, feed themselves a little bit of slack and they might fall off. So. I'll always go with elastic. I had a choice of the light or the heavy. I went with the black heavy. The carp in this lake were mainly six to sort of 15 pound that we were seeing on the camera. So I wanted an elastic that was capable of dealing with that size of fish. And I went with the long stem. I always prefer the long stem anyway, because it gives me a little bit more elastic, which acts as, a, as more of a shock absorber. But if you're trying to be really accurate and to get that feeder in front of the camera, I had to be mega accurate. Literally, you're trying to cast it onto like into an 18 inch circle pretty much into a headwind crosswind and that longer stem just makes the feeder a little bit more stable in flight and ensures accuracy one other thing i'll mention while on the subject of stem and feeder is i always go with the speed stems the reason being and this was again was shown out in underwater they allow the hook length to pivot so i feel, feel like my hook bait behaves a lot more naturally because of the speed stem, which allows me to, A, it allows me to quick change my hook length, but also it allows that hook bait to pivot and behave in a much more natural manner. And another lesson I learned from underwater is, if your hook bait's too rigid, as in it's not moving correctly, those fish definitely spook away from it. So you want your hook bait to move as naturally as possible. And I feel like a speed stem is a real big edge as far as that's concerned. Go on, lad. Go on, lad. That one has got to be on. Swim off Got then, on. Got shake on. your head, son. Good on, mate! Perhaps the aspect of underwater I was most nervous about was my hook length, my hook, and my hook bait. Now, I've gone on record loads of saying, this is how my waft of fish is, this is how it works, this is how I hook fish, but I had no idea whether it actually looked like that underwater. You can drop it in a tank, but let's be honest, a tank's totally unrealistic. You've got tow, you've got fish, etc etc i didn't know i knew what it looked like in a tank but i didn't know what it was going to look like underwater so i was really really pleased when obviously that first feeder sort of broke down hook bait popped out and it sat up it pivoted so let me talk you through it first thing hook length length i've long been an advocate of four inch hook lengths 
Uh, I feel like it's the optimum length. For F1s, you might get away with something slightly shorter, but I feel if you want to tie one length, then it has to be four inch. Material wise, again, taking into account the size of fish, the scenario we're faced with is in weed, gravel, rushes, etc. Lots of things that are against me in terms of landing fish. Four inches of 019 end gauge. The reason I went for end gauge, again, really abrasion resistant. It lasts, it's up to the task of landing big fish. The other thing is it's a copolymer. Now, what I want is my hook bait to behave as naturally as possible. And a copolymer is slightly more supple than a normal mono. What I don't want is a really stiff hook length that doesn't let, allow my hook bait to behave in a natural manner. Now, a lot will say use braid, but most of the fisheries, well, I'd say 99% of the fisheries I fish in the UK, you can't use a braided hook length. So four inches of 019 end gauge, gives me maximum movement and allows my hook bait to appear in that natural manner, which underwater has shown me is really, really important. Anything that's not quite right on the bottom, those carp can sense it and they will back away from it as a result. Hook choice, I've always been a believer, big is better. Can't find a bigger hook, harder to deal with. A little tiny hook, I think you only really hook them as in by accident almost, they suck it so far back they can't get rid of it. Whereas a big size 10 QM1, I feel like it's quite heavy, they suck it in, and, and you hook them on what I call the blowback, which is one of the reasons I don't feel a short hook length as in shorter than four inches works, because for you to hook a carp, you only hook it when it blows the hook bait back out. So as it blows it back out, that hook turns and hopefully catches in the bottom lip. So size 10 QM1, that was something else I was really nervous about. I've been a massive champion of QM1s. They've caught me a ridiculous quantity of carp over the years. But did they work how I thought they worked? Yes, we catch fish with them, but was every other fish going to get away with it? So it was really pleasing to see A, my hook holds were brilliant, but B, how hard carp found it to deal with a QM1 and that sort of unique shape. So size two, 10 QM1, tied knotless knot, and then I literally have a little loop with a little bayonet in it. The reason I have a loop is so the wafter can pivot. And one of the things, again, I was really impressed with from viewing underwater was what I want is like a light hook bait, heavy hook. So in my mind in tank tests, the hook would lie flat and the wafter would sit up. And as it happens, that's exactly what I saw. So literally my hook would lie flat, so it's lying heavy. Wafter sits up like the cherry on the cake. So the fish comes in, first thing it sees is the wafter that's sitting up, sucks it in, and then hopefully that hook catches on the way back out. One more point I will make, you cannot hook every single fish. No one does. I've watched the corder underwater. You look at someone like Danny Fairbrass, who's been, is known as the rig technician, spend hours messing around with his rigs, etc. You can't hook every fish. But what I liked about my rig was it reset itself. So like, there's a brilliant example of it in underwater too. Fish comes in, sucks in the hook bait, gets away with it, blows it back out. Hook bait goes back to the bottom, resets itself. Fish comes back in, gets nailed. Uh, Straight for the water. Oh, he's done yet! He's done yet! <laughs> you know, like those Dyson. Oh, oh he's oh, coming straight oh. back in. Oh, oh! He's got your mate. He's got your mate. He's sucked everything. He's got up. it. He's got your mate. Think he's at your rod. He's still eating. You've got him. You've got him. <laughs> <laughs> so my rig's always fishing. I wouldn't have known. I saw no indication on the tip. I didn't know my rig. Uh, my rig had been sucked in and blown out. But the confidence I got from that was, even if it had, rig still fishing. Bait's still on the dance floor, so to speak. Still got a chance of catching a fish. He's actually... He is inches. So this is typical Steve Ringer. The... Oh, oh, you off to set up now. You off this just got a... You off this just reset. Oh, my. A brilliant example of what I'm talking about in terms of heavy hook, light hook bait, was in underwater one. My hook bait got stuck a little bit under a rock, but what happened was a fish came in, caused a little bit of disturbance. That little bit of disturbance was just enough to dislodge the hook bait. The hook bait sat up, rigs fishing again perfectly. And also on that same sort of subject, it goes to show how important it is that your hook bait's behaving as naturally as possible. And that's exactly what my presentation achieves.